Three, two, one. Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. And I have a new friend on here and his name is Winslow Bud Johnson. Is it Winslow Bud or is it, is Bud just a nickname or what's? Bud Johnson. Just Bud. Okay. okay. That's good. Keep it short and to the point. Hey, Bud, how you doing? Good. I, uh, I'm anxious to uh, talk to you and your viewers about some of my uh, travels in China. I was looking up at some of your your things there. It's uh, it's interesting because, you know, I've got I used to produce uh, consumer trade shows, and one of them was called the Longevity Expo, and that's kind of what it's about. You know, you want to stretch it out. And some people are just like all about living in the moment, and some people want to hurry it along. Some people. <laughs> so you're where are you located? You're on the East Coast, aren't you? I am. I'm in Florida. Uh, but I got to tell you, one of my favorite quotes is by a fellow named Albert Einstein, supposedly one of the smartest people in the world. I've heard of him. And what he said was, do not grow old no matter how long you live. Uh, and I think that's a, that's a great way to go. And there are a lot of people in certain areas of China that are doing exactly that. Uh, and so that's kind of what I've been uh, focusing on. I've been writing books about that. I, uh, actually, I'm a writer. I'm a martial arts instructor, uh, and I'm a keynote speaker. And what I talk about is little changes people can make in their life to make a huge difference in how long they live and how well they live. And uh, I think during this coronavirus issue where we all have to stay home, I mean, I've been cooped up here getting cabin fever for a couple of weeks. Sure. Uh, but it's a great opportunity to do some of these little changes that I've learned about in China that uh, could maybe be put in people's lifestyle and make a big difference. In, in well, some, some things are not that difficult either. Some people think, oh, I got to go to the gym every single day and I got to work out for an hour. But um, I've got a martial arts background too. And as you know, the knees can go bad in the martial arts area. And what I do is very simple. I shave in the shower. And I've got a mirror set up that's about chest level. So every morning when I shave, I have to do a squat. And that keeps my knees a little bit strong. Simple <laughs> thing, but uh, it keeps my knees stronger. So I, I'm 63 now, and my knees still work pretty good. That's great. You know, we were just uh, given a notice by the uh, Collier County uh, uh, Surgeon General uh, yesterday. And, he, and the notice said, do not leave the house until further notice. So all of us are combined in our homes. Now, I don't know about other areas of the country, but I know New York has done the same thing, and a lot of Los Angeles has done the same thing. So I'm a, I'm a martial artist too, and so I've been thinking about, you know, there are ways to exercise without leaving the house. Sure. They're very simple that I've learned. I've traveled for 30 years in China, and I've studied at the Shaolin Temple and at the Wudan Mountain with the Taoist uh, priests and uh, in the Qin village where they, they claim that they invented Tai Chi. And what I've learned is there are simple ways to exercise that you don't have to leave the house. As a matter of fact, you only need about maybe five feet by five feet. And that's about it. That's all, it, all the room you need. And uh, so in my new book, The Longevity Village Plan, I talk about some of these ways the reason people in China are living a lot longer than we are is they're moving all the time. They're not sedentary. Right. And one of the things they're doing is breathing. Now, it isn't that hard to breathe, right? But if you do it right, it is amazing what it can do for you. For example, the way I do it is I breathe in for four, count of four. So one, two, three, four. Then hold it for a count of seven. And then I slowly breathe out for a count of eight. And when I'm breathing, I'm doing it in my Dang Tian, which is below your belly button. Yeah. So if you put your hand below your belly button, you feel the, the belly button or the belly going out, then you're doing it correctly. You don't just want to breathe in your chest. But if you do that for 10 minutes, it is incredible what that can do for you. I mean, it's like you get like endorphins, like you do when you're running, you know, a runner's high. Sure. You get that just from that breathing. 
And people can do that right now pretty easily. And, I've got uh, a friend that teaches breath work and he's big on that kind of stuff. And, and a lot of people are very shallow breathers. You know, they never really take a deep breath and that's good to just right. move everything out once in a while. And there are a lot of very simple things. Like I do my coffee workout while my coffee is brewing in the morning. I'm, I just hit the kitchen floor and I do sit-ups. Just wait for that. that that's thing. great. So there's always little things and it's easy for people just to get, you know, so I think a, a book like yours is the kind of thing that as people read that, they think, oh my God, that's, that's simple. Why, why am I not doing that, right? So, you know, another thing that I learned, I studied at the Shaolin Temple in, uh, in a little village called Dequang in China. And you know what the monks do in the morning is they do Qigong. And there are simple ways of doing it, but let me give you an example. So when you're breathing, instead of just sitting there and breathing, if you do certain exercises, like for example, you raise your arms and breathe in, hold it, breathe out, and then you keep doing that. Now there, there's a real simple thing that anybody can look up on the internet. In my book, I talk about it in some detail, but it's called Ba Duan Jin. Ba means eight in Chinese, Ba Duan Jin. And you can look that up on the internet and you'll find that exercise. See lots of videos about it. Some of them by Shaolin monks. And there are eight, Ba means eight. So there are eight different exercises with that breathing. It takes about 10 minutes to go through it. And I'm telling you, at the end of that, you feel good. Now that's a way of exercising without really exercising. You know, it's, and you can do it at home. It's kind of cheating, you know, but it really works. And I highly recommend that while people are, are staying at home, why not learn something new? And that's, that's an example. Of sure. So I, can I ask, how old are you? I am 78. Well, you're a good looking 78. I every day and I, do, I teach uh, Kung Fu and Tai Chi and uh, I don't feel older at all. So <laughs> I think this stuff works. And you, I think a lot of it too is your mind. How do you act? I act like a kid a lot. <laughs> so. I mean, I go out with my friends, I'm 63, and I go out with my friends that are older, and they've got a park and handicapped, and they, they have to waddle mm -hmm. to the door and walk slow, and it's just... I see people walking around here stooped over, and, you, you know, it's, uh, it's sad, it's unnecessary. You know, I have a really, really neat exercise that I do in my keynote speeches. I ask everybody in an audience, I say, imagine that you're 100 years old, and then imagine you're 100 years old and you're healthy. You don't have any health issues and you feel great. And then imagine that you're 100 years old and you're still doing the very same things you're doing today, maybe even more things. And I've got people thinking about that. And then I tell them there's a place in China, it's called the Longevity Village. That's what my book, The Longevity Village Plan is based on. But those people, there's more 100 year olds in that little village than anywhere in the world. I've heard of that. There's five times more 100 year olds in, in that village. There was 87 100 year olds in this tiny little village. And the village is in, it's in the Guangxi province. It's about a five hour drive from the nearest airport. And there are 108 year olds that have never been sick a day in their life. Sure. One fella is 113 years old and he goes to work every day. 113 years old, he gets up in the morning, he puts on his ethnic clothing. You know, they, it's a little village in the hinterland there, so they, they're like ethnics in, in China. Puts on his ethnic clothing and he greets uh, visitors to the, uh, to the village. And, and if you put some money in his little red envelope, he'll tell you how old he is and he'll tell you his secret as to why he thinks he lives so long. And it's great. So it's like but a tour, it, tour it operator. It, it proves that age is just, uh, you can control it. You can control how long you live. By what you do. Yeah, well, if you think about it, if, if it was, if age was really that relevant, every person would be the same kind of physical shape. Like when you turn 40, you would be that specific physical shape, but that's not true. There's a right. different, varied amount of physical wealth and or health. Well, let me give you some interesting uh, insight. Right? Most people, when I talk to them, I see, you know, they they say, I can, I can live a long time because my parents lived a long time. 
or my dad died young, so I'm probably going to die young. They say it's in the genes, right? That's wrong. I don't well, that's probably true. 20 to 30 percent of your ability to live a long life is based on your genes. But that means that 70 to 80 percent is based on what you do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how you live your life. And uh, we can make changes. So we can emulate some of those people in little villages in China, for example. I agree. And we can spend our life, you know, in America, we barely make it past 80. The average age in America is 78. Believe that. I'm actually that age. <laughs> so that's well, when age. people go to the store, they always want to look for parking close to the door. Why don't you just park where there's parking and walk to the door? It's exactly. Not, exactly. Or, or take the stairs once in a while. I like to even stretch. I like to you know just stretch them the muscles a lot. It keeps keeps pull, that pull back and, and, and keeps the keep, blood flowing keep, and everything. You know they believe uh, long tendons equals long life. You know so what they'll do is stretch their legs down. Oh sure. To try to extend their life. It's really Never not only <laughs> you know they don't eat the same way that we do. Uh, a lot right. of people think that Chinese food is bad for you. And we have a bad rep here in, in America because we go to a Chinese restaurant and they have greasy noodles that they plop some meat on top of and you know, they think that's Chinese food. Chinese people wouldn't even recognize that. I mean, I have, I have been in pretty much every area in China for over 30 years. And I've never seen that stuff. You know, Chinese food is probably the healthiest food in the world. And one of the reasons it's mostly vegetable based, all right? Mm -hmm. In the longevity village, where they live forever, uh, they eat vegetables for breakfast, they eat vegetables for lunch, they eat vegetables for dinner. That doesn't mean they don't have meat, but in America, we have a steak dinner, right? right. And there might be some vegetables on the side. We have a, a salmon dinner, or we have a, you know, a chicken dinner. The meat is always the center. And then there's vegetables on the side. That's not true in China, particularly in places like the longevity village. The vegetables, the big deal, and that there may be some meat on the side to garnish it. It's just a, another way of thinking. And a lot of us eat meat every day, uh, and it's really not that good for you. If, if you were to skip eating meat one day a week, that's a 14% reduction in the amount of meat you're eating. That could make a huge difference uh, sure. in, in your health and your, in your longevity. Yeah, I agree. We got ours uh, flipped around. It's like the 80-20 the principle. I think we got to work it around the other way, maybe 80% vegetables, 20% meat rather than... Yeah. You know, another thing, my, my mother was wrong. Uh, when I grew up, my mother said, son, clean your plate. Right. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if your mother said that. But my oh, mother, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a normal thing. Clean I've your still plate. got it in my head. Bad advice, all right? In, in China, they believe in the 80% rule. And this is pretty much all over China, but particularly with older people. And the rule is you eat until you're 80% full, and then you stop. And I've been, in, I've been in dinners. You know, in China, they have these big round tables in, in restaurants. And people will always invite older people and younger people. And got, there's no... There's, it's not unusual to see somebody inviting their grandmother to go to lunch with them, you know? And it's not, not just the grandmother, it's also the uncles and the aunts and the business partners. If you go into these restaurants with these huge round tables, they're always full. And you'll see a different age groups, right? And I've been in many, many of those meetings. So I'm sitting there, and the guy sitting next to me is 90 years old, and, uh, and he didn't finish his plate. <laughs> he didn't eat everything. He just stopped. And I said to him, What's the matter? Don't you like the food? Is there, is there something wrong? He says, no, I'm 80% full. That's it. I'm not going to eat anymore. And that is a really neat way of controlling your weight. It's controlling, you know, obesity is bad. I mean, obesity shortens your life. And this is a way of controlling that. Without a special diet, just eat 80%. Well, here in the United States, it's all about as much as you can. You go to the all-you-can-eat buffet and you load it all up, and then you get the big gulp, 64 or 150-ounce soda, sugar water with bubbles in it. And it's just weird how we eat here. Like in Thailand, I think they have like five meals a day, but they're all little small meals, little, little street meals. And you don't need to fill up. 
Why not just eat multiple times? So it's, it's a weird you know, culture. Eat much. And, and when, I, when I'm in China, I'll sit in one of these uh, restaurants that are, they have enormous malls, beautiful, modern malls. You know, some of the tables are out in the mall. And I'll sit there and people watch. And I, and I watch all these people going by. And what I noticed is the people are thinner than we are. Oh, sure. Almost everywhere you go in China, people in America and in other areas of the world are much heavier than the people in China. Why is that? Diet. I mean, sure. it's the 80% rule, and it's eating a lot of vegetables and kind of minimizing the amount of sugar that they eat. Now, unfortunately, they're starting to learn about sugar, but uh, you can see a lot of pastry shops over there now. But that's not well, the I, I got a sweet tooth once in a while. I got to have something too. <laughs> So, Bud, I don't like to do these too long because people have that commodity of time and I want them to be able to digest all this using that term with food, digest. <laughs> so can you share a couple uh, tips that they can maybe take away and then share with us how do we get a hold of you and learn more about it? If you got a right. website or something like that. I've got a few tips, all right? Number one, do something with your body every day. That's very important. You mean more? going or move, just move. Don't just sit in a chair watching Netflix or watching TV. I mean, it's bad for you. Number two, try to eat more vegetables and less meat. I mean, that is one of the keys to success over there in the longevity village. The next thing I would suggest is now we can't do it, but when this, vi when this virus thing is lifted, socialize. It's very healthy to do face-to-face -face contact. Now, you and I are on the internet right now. And that's great, but it's not the same as eyeball to eyeball. Right. Uh, that, that does something magic to your body. So socializing is, Chinese people feel that's extremely important. And I would suggest reducing stress. Uh, and one of the ways of reducing stress is uh, when you're socializing, don't socialize with negative people because negative people can <laughs> add a lot of stress. So you want to be with people like yourself that are amenable and friendly and easy to get along with. Uh, if you're constantly being criticized and, and you know, sarcastic comments all the time, that's not good for you. So try to avoid those people if you can. That would be my advice. And pay attention to what uh, Albert Einstein said. No matter how you, long you live, uh, you never get old. Well, they say uh, you're, you're, as old, you're as old as you feel, right? <laughs> exactly. You can, you can do more, you can learn more about this in my book, The Longevity Village Plan. It's on Amazon. Okay. It talks about some recipes you can use, and some exercises you can use, and how to avoid negative people using the ancient Chinese zodiac system. It's very interesting. Uh, or you can get hold of me on my website, which is winslowbudjohnson.com. Winslowbudjohnson.com. Winslowbudjohnson. And the book, and what was the name of the book again? Longevity the, Village. The longevity go, uh, show me a picture of it. Plan. Longevity Village Plan. Perfect. Got Any it. secrets to a longer life? <laughs> That's wonderful. I think it's good that people do one, move more. Two, don't eat so much. <laughs> three, yeah. what was three? It was kind of like relax, meditate, de stress, de stress, and, and socialize. Nice. Exactly. Perfect. Well, Bud, I appreciate you taking the time to spend it with me uh, here at Synergy Cafe. Here's my little coffee cup. And I'm not going to shake your hand, but here's how we do it in China. Oh, sure. Like this? Or like this? Well, if you're a martial artist, which you are, you do it this way. If you're not a martial artist, you do it this way. Oh, I do it like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bud. Appreciate it. I'll be, uh, beam this up to the universe and let people find it. Okay? All right. Thank you, sir. Talk to you.